I used to work at record stores. It was a pretty sweet gig. I got to talk about music and movies all day, work with awesome people, and I got a sweet discount. But when the third store I worked at went out of business, I knew I needed to find a new line of work. Like video stores and travel agencies. We just couldn't fight the internet. But it's not just businesses that are getting less foot traffic. Recent polls from across the nation show less and less young adults are practicing their religion. Well, more and more young adults are dropping out of church. According to a recent study, 66% have stopped attending. Well, Sunday is a day when a lot of people head to church, but a new study shows that number is on the decline. So a new report from the Pew Research Center shows that the percentage of Americans who say they believe in God, pray daily, and attend church regularly is declining. Not as many people are going to church. And churches are uh, kind of freaking out. I'm Trevor Pullman. I'm one of the hosts of the Believe It or Not podcast. So I thought I would take a look at why the church, apologists, and, and pastors think this is happening. But I bet everyone has some real nuanced answers. It's, uh, it's because we want to sin, isn't it? Matthew! Harry, you've got to get rid of the evil in you. It's God's will! God's will! Christ died for your sin. Okay. So, sometimes uh, it's because of just the deep attraction of the world. Uh, they And that was me. I mean, I wanted to be a part of the world. I wanted the pleasures of the world. Uh, I wanted the, the benefits of being a part of the world. You, you don't want to do everything the Bible or God says. You, you, you know, you're out on your own for the first time. You want to live it up a little bit. Look. Teacher said don't, but I said it anyway, misbehaving. Preacher said no, if you do, you're going to pay misbehaving. The house with the in my basic fallen human nature to pursue our desires. So if you can tell a young person, if you could have told me, hey, I've got an alternative worldview for you that gives you a, a creation story and even gives you a purpose that's different than, and this actually allows you to, to do the things you always wanted to do without feeling bad about it. And throw morals yes, on. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, th th what do you think young people are going to say? I mean, you can sin and still go to church. That's kind of the main deal, isn't it? You get forgiven. And if you believe that God is real, you wouldn't skip out on the forgiveness part, would you? And if you don't believe he exists, then you don't go to church because you don't believe he exists, not because you want to sin or live it up. That's just an added bonus. And I'm not even getting into what sin actually is, and who gets to choose which biblical rules you follow, or, or what each denomination considers sin that others don't. I'll just say that most people don't walk away from the church because they just want to live it up. Oh. I forgot, I have musical auditions this Friday. They drug test for beer. My hunch is your friend's reluctance to believe in God doesn't come from the scriptures, but from an attitude that doesn't want to believe in God. Because if he believed, he would have to change his life or submit him, his mind to ideas and values that may not be of his liking or of his particular reason. I really don't think belief is something you choose. You either believe something exists or you don't. You may want to believe you have an expensive sports car in the garage, but you can't make yourself believe you do. You can wish something existed or didn't exist, but you can't decide that you believe it. Why don't we try another theory? Maybe it's because of the flashy lights and electric guitars. Or more specifically, can we blame churches for entertaining teenagers instead of teaching them? You know, Kelvin here specializes in youth ministry. Is that a fact? Yes, sir. I like to connect with the youths. You know, get on their level with, with sports, activities, we go laser tagging. They were there for the fun youth group. They were there for the events. They were there for their friends but they were not there for their faith. Church youth programs tend to focus on providing entertainment and pizza rather than building up young people in their faith. As a result, teens are ill-equipped to face the challenges they will encounter upon leaving home. In their defense though, that pizza looks really good. If church is no different than VBS or a rock concert, then why bother? When something is too easy or too generic, it loses its appeal quickly. <laughs> Wait a minute, this sounds like rock and or roll. I mean, they kind of do have a point. You can just go to a rock concert and, and listen to music that is actually good. And you can just join a club. So why would I need to go to a church if all it is is entertainment? But they've been doing stupid youth group stuff forever, right? The question isn't why do some people leave, it's, it's why are so many people leaving now? Maybe it's not the church's fault, maybe it's the parents' fault. An active interest in them and stepped into their lives. 
And if the church doesn't help parents to step into the lives of their children, we will lose them. If you really want your kids to fall away from the faith and get bitter towards Christianity, watch dirty movies and let them see you're doing it. Use bad language, blaspheme God's name, and argue with each other in front of them because there's nothing that right. uh, destroys respect like hypocrisy and makes a child bitter against parents. There are holes in my belts! Who put these holes in my belts? Dad's a belt? That's what happens. People, they, they, you latch them up through those holes. Not in my belts! There's a lot of uh, breakdown of the family and young people growing up see maybe the hypocrisy of their parents and they say, no thanks, I don't want to go there. Is a lot of parents, we see this in churches, have been a poor example and they've blown the witness. Mom, are you driving me to... Mm, yeah, yeah, yes, what time? Oh my God, are you drunk? Mm. What are you, my wife, coach? You're what? Oh, God! Oh, oh, oh my God, so hard, are you okay? I didn't I'm gonna have to... a bruise! It's picture day! It's not, don't overreact, <laughs> I can clean it up. I want the police to take me! This one kind of bothers me, not just because I don't agree with it, which I don't, I mean, we're talking about adults who have to make their own decisions of how they view the world, but also because it's parents that are usually hurt and feeling like a failure when their kids lose their faith. And they're the ones who would be seeking these kinds of videos. So to blame them just adds to the hurt they already have. My parents love God immensely and taught us to do the same. And I did so much until I didn't. Or maybe it's the scary professor. And they get to college and they meet that first professor or those friends that ask some hard questions, uh, and moralism just doesn't answer those questions. And when these young people go off to college, very often they're not prepared, they're not equipped to deal with the professors of the day, many of whom are atheists or agnostics, and they just undermine these young people as they go into college, undermines their faith. Some Christian goes to university and some professor gives some argument that knocks the belief of God out of it. You know, the universities are challenging them with their worldview, they're teaching them a naturalistic worldview that's contrary to what they were raised in. Um, they don't have uh, the tools to debate against those things and respond objectively and rationally. Hiya class, I'm your cool new teacher, not some scary guy with a secret evil agenda. So we really didn't see anything statistically significant of some of the things that we say, you know, they go off to college and the atheist professor convinces them that their faith isn't real. We didn't see that as, at a statistically significant level in the research. Yeah, this isn't God's not dead. It's not enough that you don't believe. You need all of us to not believe with you. Why don't you admit the truth? You just want to ensnare them in your primitive superstition. What I want is for them to make their own choice. That's what God wants. You have no idea how much I'm going to enjoy failing you. But maybe it's not the professor himself, but the dangerous science he's teaching. I don't understand evolution, and I had to protect my kids from understanding it. We will not give in to the thinkers. And when they're out in the secular media and they watch television, mm -hmm. you know, Bill Nye, the science guy, evolution is the basis of, of science and, and so on and so on. So you and I are the product of billions, billions of years, billions of years of tiny changes, tiny changes to our DNA. The interviews show that the majority of young people who were not exposed to apologetics teaching and specifically evidences for biblical creation in their youth now embrace evolution and no longer attend church. But every student that was interviewed who was equipped with answers as a young person still retains their Christian convictions in spite of the, the evolutionary teaching that they receive in higher education. And I remind you that evolution is merely a theory, like gravity or the shape of the Earth. People are bailing out because scientific evidence, so-called science, is supposedly undermining this account. And what happens is, once you see, too many people recognize the reality of this. You start having the dominoes fall and click, 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 click. They go right down the line until you start taking out the New Testament. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Why is it always evolution and not the forming of languages? The Bible also says that languages are formed because they tried to build a tower to God. But we, we can track and map changes to languages, and we understand how languages are formed. But it's always evolution. Why would Jesus want to shoot Charles Darwin? Because of his blasphemous theories. This is a book that says how rabbits chew their cud. Striped animals exist because they mated near sticks and there's a firmament over the earth. So they don't search for evidence, they create apologetics and arguments. And science isn't decided by those things, it's decided by evidence and discovery. Or as Kenneth Miller, who happens to be a Christian and a scientist would say, 
science, the competitive nature of science, guarantees that if evolution was a uniquely weak or shaky theory with no evidence behind it, people be standing in line, scientists standing in line to knock it off its pedestal. They're not. I can't think of a single theory in the life sciences that has been tested and probed more thoroughly than evolution. It's 152 years after the publication of The Origin of Species, and it's still standing. That's a darn good theory. Okay, the next one is a personal favorite of mine. They never were a Christian to begin with. You're a phony! Hey, this guy's a great big phony! Because I think there's been a lot of false conversions. They've said a little, little prayer at church and they thought they were safe, you know? Because if you really think about it, if you're really a follower of Christ, you love Jesus, you're in his word, you're, you know, you're making disciples, you're not gonna abandon the faith. Yeah. That's right, you're a big fat phony! Well, I think they leave church because they're not part of the church. It's as simple as that. When someone's born again, they put the hand of the plow, um, they don't look back because they're fit for the kingdom. So you can take a new convert and drop them into a den full of hungry lions and they won't like raise their fist at God, they'll drop to their knees. Right. Tribulation drives a true believer, tribulation, temptation, and persecution. The reason for this logic is simple. If someone can lose their faith, then so can I. And I refuse to believe that's possible. So nope, they never really believed in the first place. How do you do it? Well, I'll tell you my secret, sir. I lie to myself. Then we get into something else I think is kind of right. When we're little kids, we read the Bible and it, it sings, right? We read these stories and it just, it touches us so deeply. Then we get a little older and we read about the, the dark underbelly of the Noah's Ark story or reading about God commanding Israel to wipe out the Canaanites. And it's hard to make sense of that. And so that's another reason. Of course we love the Bible as kids. We were kids and they were told as stories that cut out the evil parts. The church, when we surveyed young people, is they begin to doubt the scriptures, and because they never got adequate responses, which is sad, hey, they didn't have one minute apologists. They weren't checking their videos out. Whatever the case may be, uh, those doubts led to intellectual skepticism. And eventually, if they said, hey, I don't believe the Bible, of course, if the Bible is not true, of course you're not gonna be a Christian. This one goes back to the evolution thing. If we can look at the Bible and realize that there are so many things that don't add up, and the nature of God himself in the Bible is inconsistent, it makes sense that the rest of our faith will also fall away. But maybe I just don't understand it. Scripture cannot be understood without the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. So your friend may know what some of Scripture says, but he cannot understand scripture any more than any of the rest of us could uh, without faith. But that begs the question, how does anyone understand the Bible? If you have to have faith going in in order to understand it, the Bible is less of a book of morals and teachings and more of the imagination meal from the movie Hook. You're doing it. Doing what? Using your imagination, Peter. This guy's very notion of how to read the Bible makes it an exclusionary book that needs a decoder ring. That in itself would answer why people aren't staying in the church. Or maybe we can blame them and say they were never invested in the church enough. They don't give money to church. They don't serve in church. They don't pray with and for the church. You need to be invested in the church or you're at risk of just being a critical walkaway person of God's amazing, beautiful, glorious, and imperfect church. Really, 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 really fun. There are so many things that could be wrong or annoying or whatever. So many little things that could set you off if you allow your heart to be that way. That is not the heart of Christ. Sermons about constancy and prudicitude are all very well and good, but the church could be doing so much more to reach out to people. Oh, I don't see you volunteering to make things better. Well, okay. I will volunteer. I wasn't prepared for that. Our next reason, whatever number we're on, I just couldn't find a church to meet my needs. Well, isn't that too bad? Sorry. I forgot to take my anti-sarcasm pill today. Church doesn't exist for us. We exist for the church. We are the church. Hmm. 
Okay. What's your solution? Address teenagers in, in our youth groups like the emerging adults that they are. Uh, we need to call them to repentance and faith. We need to call them to a life of discipleship. We need to be willing to answer hard questions in high school, long before they ever get to college. Mm, I'm a shepherd without a flock. What have I done to lose them? The real question is, what have you done to keep them? <gasps> Saint Yell Eutherius of Nicomedia. That's my name, don't wear it out. We need to stop teaching and start training, and there is a difference. Now, I can go through this in steps, but I wanted to show you the one thing that turns teaching into training. Teaching, in some ways, is kind of like, you know, like you watch that old uh, Snoopy cartoon, right? With Charlie Brown in the classroom, there's a teacher in the background, wah, 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 wah. And that's what you have to have. You've got to impart information. It's an important part of the educational process. I get that. But training is something different. Training is not just imparting information. Training is preparing for a battle, preparing for a challenge. And in addition to understanding why evolution doesn't work and where it's wrong, having apologetics training in church. Uh, you know, people do not believe Genesis anymore. Sadly, even within many of the churches. So we tell people, hey, you need Jesus to be saved. They don't get it because they don't have the proper foundation. What we need to do is go down and lay the foundation and then build the gospel up from that foundation. Tell us, good reverend, what great deeds have you done to inspire the hearts of men? Well, I had the vestibule recarpeted. I've appeared in over 8,000 visions, and that's the lamest reply I've ever heard. So let's boil this all down. From the problems to the solutions, the answers seem to be to pump them full of information and train them how to defend that information, but never tell them how to think for themselves and come to their own conclusions. What other area of your life would the advice be to be taught what to think? instead of how to think. Nobody is gonna become a mathematician by being taught the answers to math problems instead of being taught how to solve math problems. Archeologists aren't just taught about history, they learn how to discover it. If you believe that the church has the right answers and that God is real, then being free to ask questions and search for yourself should bring you right back to God, right? As John Calvin said, all truth is God's truth. If the conflicting creation stories in Genesis are true, then science would eventually lead us to that conclusion. If languages were formed because we built a tower, then linguistics and archaeology would eventually confirm that. It seems to me that all these reasons and approaches just show how insecure the church is with their own beliefs. The answer to keeping people in the church seems to be for them to stop thinking. And that's getting harder to do with the invention of the internet. Allison, can you explain what internet is? We can look stuff up. We can fact check things in real time. And the search engines will show us all the millions of pages of websites and chat lines and games and everything? It's all right here at your fingertips. Just like the record stores I worked for and our dearly departed blockbuster, the internet may just take down the church. And maybe the stories in the Bible that don't add up with science are just metaphor. And you're okay with people studying the world around them and thinking for themselves because the Bible was never meant to be a science book. Which is great. The other issue then is that the Bible itself offers a way to test if it's true and if people are really touched by God. You see, the Bible has something called the fruits of the spirit. It's great for kids' ministries because you can use colorful pictures of fruit and make funny songs. The fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. You want to be a coconut. You want to well hear it. The fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. You want to be a coconut. You want to well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit. Cause the fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. You want to be a coconut. You see, it's all about how nice people should behave. But when you read this, it's not like it's a list of commandments or rules. It's saying that this is how to test if people are really being touched by God, touched by the Spirit. If people have this in their life, it's saying that this is evidence that God is real and living in them. These things are love. Pastors don't speak up is how we end up with men in the women's restroom. Any man who would have sex with another man would have sex with an animal. Yeah. 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 That is true. Joy. And where have you been, Mr. Underwood? And I noticed on the calendar I'm supposed to marry y'all. What makes you think I'd marry you? You're one of the sorriest church members I have. You're not worth 15 cents. Peace. Well, guess what? My First Amendment right is protected by my Second Amendment right. 
So come and get it. Patience. And that pastor now arrested for failing to follow the stay-at-home order in his county. His reckless disregard for human life put hundreds of people in his congregation at risk and thousands of residents who may interact with them this week in danger. Kindness. Harvey slammed into Texas. Pastor Joel initially offered prayers, but little else in social media pounced. His critics demanding more. Open your church as a shelter, one person wrote. Provide food and clothing, please. Goodness. I think the Bible does teach we ought to show compassion wherever we're able to show compassion. But that compassion needs to be a shared compassion. Yes, it is gut-wrenching to see these children separated from their parents at the border. The only thing more gut-wrenching is to see children like Kate Steinle separated from their parents forever because they were killed by illegal immigrants. Or Faithfulness. The world is the most serious mess it's ever been in it's just it is there mm -hmm. and it's it's coming apart yes and we better prepare we better be ready it's time to be ready mm. you can order if you can't get the the seven years which is actually nine and a half years today mm -hmm. yeah you can get the year of food for you gentleness Creflo Dollar was arrested on charges he punched and choked his teenage daughter and as Dan Harris reports tonight, the pastor was back before his congregation preaching and pushing back. Creflo Dollar's congregation stood and cheered as he took to the pulpit to defend himself in self-control. Tonight, several parents are both shocked and relieved after a youth pastor is arrested for having a sexual relationship with a teenage girl he was mentoring. This lawsuit alleges the church tried to cover up the abuse after the victim reported it. It also states that employees told the victim, quote, it was her fault. Andy was allowed to go before the church and basically say that he had made a mistake and that it was time for him to move on. I did not attend that service, uh, nor did I attend the going away party that they had for him afterwards. I was and remain very remorseful for the incident and deeply regret the pain I caused her and her family, as well as the pain I caused the church and God's kingdom. People were celebrating him and showering him with love and um, telling him how much they'll miss him. And here I am struggling. You see, we see you and we don't see the evidence. I'm wondering now if maybe the question shouldn't be why are so many people leaving church, but why are there still so many churches? Maybe like Blockbuster, it's served its purpose and it's time to move on. Thanks for making it this far. If you liked what you saw, share it with someone who might like it. Subscribe or leave a comment. And as my cat makes a racket in the background, have a wonderful day. Work, 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 Sky Moon. Because <laughs> once pornography becomes mainstream or normal in the church life, You'll never reverse it.